second grade welcome back to another really fun uh, math topic today we're going to talk about bar graphs they're different from picture graphs which we uh, learned about yesterday picture graphs are when you have the legend where you make that circle one circle represents one vote for example bar graphs there's no need for a legend instead you have a tool called a scale so pay attention for that um, that scale word as we go through just like yesterday though, you will need the same vocabulary for categories, right? Groups based on similar characteristics, the data, the numbers, right? The information that is collected. And then the table is that way of organizing, that chart that's used to kind of hold all of the data that we, that we find. So you should remember that from yesterday, so I'm gonna move right along. Today I'm gonna walk you through not only your new learning, but also the let's try end the problem set because I really want to make sure you know how to build a bar graph yourself because we're going to do a special project with bar graphs later this week. So our new learning for today. As you can see, we are dealing with types of bugs. So the first thing I want to point out is the title, types of bugs in our table. And you'll notice it in one more place below in our bar graph types of bugs. The title is the same for both table and bar graph. The next word I want you to pay attention to is categories. We know the categories in the table are butterflies, spiders, bees, and grasshoppers. Now you'll take a peek and you'll notice in your packet or on my screen where the categories are in the bar graph. So if you're noticing right here, the categories are the exact same and they stay in order. Butterflies, butterflies, spiders, spiders, bees, bees, grasshoppers, and grasshoppers. So it's really important to keep the data in the same order as you go to keep yourself organized. Speaking of data, that is our next point. So the data in the table are those numbers, 5, 14, 12, and 7. You'll notice that the data in the bar graph looks a little bit different. So the data is what I've circled here in purple. One, two, three, four, five, five butterflies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14 spiders, so on and so forth. So the data stacks up in the bar graph. Now you'll notice I counted, however, that word scale is here to help us. You don't actually need to count because if you set up your scale correctly here at the bottom, you can see that the number of spiders, 14, lines up with 14 in the scale. The number of butterflies, five, if I trace this line down, it lines up with five in the scale. So the scale is there so that you don't necessarily have to count each individual box. It's time consuming, right? The scale takes care of that for us. Again, the scale is different than the legend from the picture graph. All right. In your new learning, they go through next. It's a couple of um, different word problems for you to solve. I'm going to skip over that. Please read through. Um, on your own, and then I'll model a couple later on. All right. Now we're in the let's try section. You'll see the new bar graph they already created for you is titled Favorite Animals. So this is the part where we're going to practice solving word problems based on um, based on a bar graph provided for us, or maybe one we draw on our own in just a bit. So if you have your DCPS packet, that'd be great to have it out with you. We'll solve these problems together and keep you moving. Um, if you don't, you might want to just go pause the video and go grab it so you can follow along with us. All right, let's look at problem A. How many students voted for their favorite animal? Hmm. Well, I'm noticing the chart is called favorite animals, and these are the number of votes. So how many students in all voted for favorite animal? Hmm. All we have to do is put those numbers together. 2 plus 9 plus 11 plus 4. If you're looking at these four numbers thinking, huh, where do I start? Always, always, always try to make yourself an easy 10. Or in this case, 
an easy 20. 11 plus 9 or 9 plus 11 gives us that 20. I already, I noticed in the ones place, the 9 and the 1, and thought to myself, yep, that's 10 plus 10 more. We've got an easy 20. That leaves us with just the 2 and the 4. Easy fast fact of 6. And then if we add those numbers together, our 20 plus 6 will give us 26 students voted for their favorite animal. Remember that whole, full, complete sentence. That makes your answer complete. All right, not bad, right? Let's move on to question B. How many more students liked Komodo dragons than koala bears? Well, let's take a look at our chart. The only way that we're going to be able to solve this is if we use the bar graph. So let's look at the two animals mentioned, Komodo dragon. So follow along with me. Yep, Komodo dragon. I see that Komodo dragon got 11 votes. All right. Koala bears. I see koala bear got four votes. Okay, so now what do we do with those numbers? How many more students liked Komodo dragons than koala bears? Well, there's two ways to do this. You might remember from yesterday on the picture graph. Yes, you can do the math. Um, you can make a number sentence, but you might also just use the graph to see the difference between. So I'm noticing that koala bear only goes up to four and Komodo dragon goes up to 11. I can count the empty boxes in the koala bear row to figure out the difference, right? How many more students like Komodo dragons is how many more votes it got. Or I can write the number sentence 11 minus 4. So if you know 11 minus 4, go ahead and solve it. I'm going to count these empty boxes to make sure that we get the correct answer. So I see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. If you said 11 minus 4 is 7 more students voted for Komodo Dragon than Koala Bear, you are right on track. Way to rock. The last thing we're going to do, and perhaps in my opinion the most important, is learn how to build a bar graph ourselves. So please stay tuned and join me in the problem set. The problem set looks like this. It's your turn to build the graph. Why I want to do this with you is because it's our one and only chance to do it together. So let's, um, let's try this out and make sure that you have all the pieces you need for future bar graph making. Let's start with the title. It's the, in my opinion, easiest thing because it's right here listed in the table. And then it's the same thing that's going right on your bar graph. So if you see the title there, types of bugs, I want you to go ahead and hand write yours in types of bugs. Done and done. Now, no spelling errors are allowed, right? All the information we need is right here. Types of bugs. All right. Next thing we're going to focus on are the categories. So you'll notice here, butterflies, spiders, bees, and grasshoppers. Obviously second grade, you know we love bugs. So this is exciting to see um, them listed in our, in our work today. The categories are the four ones I just mentioned. We need to make sure that we keep those in the same order in our bar graph. So notice these four lines right here are provided for you to write down your categories. No spelling errors. I have an advantage because I'm typing, so you guys have to make your handwriting a little bit smaller to fit the names of your categories like so. Butterflies, spiders, bees, grasshoppers. It is important that your words go right on the line for when we actually are filling out the graphing part in just a bit. Now you might be thinking, Miss Allie, can I just write B for butterflies? No, you can't because what other category also starts with the letter B? Hmm, bees, exactly. So if you just do B, right? If you just did B, S, B, G, people might not know when looking at just your bar graph alone what the B stands for. So it is important that you write out that whole word. I hope your hands aren't tired. Let's keep going. All right. So now that we have our title and our categories, the next thing we're going to do is design our scale. We can't go jump into the data yet because the scale isn't created. 
as you can see down here, the numbers are empty. They placed the zero at this flat line right here because that means that nothing has any votes right now. We need to fill out these dashes with the numbers all the way from 1 to 14. So I went ahead and wrote mine in. Now, I want you to take notice as you're writing yours. The numbers don't correlate to the box. They correlate to the line. So for example, look at the 6. The 6 matches up with this line. That matters. If the 6 is in the middle of a box, that is not accurate. It has to be all the way up a full box colored in. And you'll see why in just a second. So make sure your number is lined up right with the line. That does matter. I'm going to keep moving. If you want to pause me and keep filling in your scale, do it. The last thing we need to do is fill in the data. So you'll see here, I did the first one for us. Butterflies has four. I need to color each box individually, stay in the lines of the box, right next to butterflies. So I'm not down here, I'm right next to butterflies coming across in my horizontal row. Butterflies has four, one box, two box, three box, four, and you'll see here the line lines up, if we drag it down, with the four, so important. Go ahead on your own, I want you to fill out the rest of the chart, I mean sorry, the bar graph, and then you're gonna try out the word problems on your own. So this is where I leave you. I will show you what the rest of the bar graph looks like. I filled them out. But you are gonna go ahead and do this on your own. Keep the space between each one, right? Notice there's space between each of the bars so that the bar graph is very easy to read. I hope this video has helped you today. Move on to the word problems and come back to this video if you need um, to keep going to finish your graphing today and in the future. All right, I'll talk to you next time.